Hello there. Thank you so much for joining us. This is News Channel Nebraska. My name is Eric McKay. Let's take a look at our top headlines today. Nebraska got a second round of severe weather late Monday. After early morning storms, another batch rolled into several parts of Nebraska, hitting as far west as the northern panhandle, while also adding further flooding risks to those in eastern Nebraska along the Missouri River. But it was the south central part of the state that got hit the hardest in the evening batch of storms with several severe thunderstorm warnings and multiple tornado warnings. The system hung around longer than initially expected with overnight tornado warnings in southeast Nebraska, including reports of a touchdown south of Lincoln. Now, Nebraskans aren't out of the woods just yet. Central and eastern Nebraska expecting still more storms Tuesday afternoon and evening. Meanwhile, heavy rainfall deluged Nebraska towns, shutting down highways and causing flooding throughout eastern Nebraska. This video, shared by the Nebraska State Patrol, showed water rushing over Highway 77 near the town of Soresco, north of Lincoln. The Nebraska Department of Transportation shut down Nebraska Highway 92 west of Wahoo at a nine-mile stretch of U.S. Highway 81 between Shelby and Stromsburg, southwest of Columbus, due to standing water. This after a rain gauge in northern Lancaster County reported 7.3 inches of rain. Over six inches of rain was reported near Papillion. Flooding ongoing on the Missouri and despite U.S. House action and $40 million in taxpayer funding, the levee near Peru was not fully repaired after the last flooding disaster. Dan Swanson has more. About a thousand acres of cropland are underwater near Peru after a rising Missouri River found its way onto lowland despite the R-562 agricultural levy. A.G. Rigier of Oklahoma is visiting friends in Peru. I haven't seen the Missouri for a long time, so I actually went to Brownville and watched it go across there. But then I came here and I'm like, this river is on the doorstep of Peru. Nemaha County Emergency Management Director Rene Kreitzer said the levee had not been 100 percent repaired following the 2019 flood disaster. She said there were low spots that allowed water into the protected side of the levee. Floodwaters have reached the north end of the city of Peru, but all the most flood vulnerable residences in that area were moved out following the 2019 flood. And Jerry Patterson, whose five-generation home was condemned after the 2019 flood, described the current flooding. Well, this is a very slow flood because our levee washed out. Instead of having a broken levee where it just have a gush of water, the water just rose slowly. The city is now getting its drinking water from Auburn, so the flood is not a threat to the drinking wells as it was in 2019. Patterson and resident Jackie Whistler said they understand that much of the 7.8 mile levee was repaired after a U.S. House action to allow the use of federal funds on inactive levees. The $40 million project benefited from a $5 million allocation from the state. They said the levee was not repaired on its lowest end, which is east of Peru. The levee broke in 2019 and they haven't repaired it. It was that they did not fail, uh, fix a couple of the holes that were in the levee from 2019, so um, this is what happened. From Peru, I'm Dan Swanson, News Channel, Nebraska. Meanwhile, Hurricane Barrel, now a Category 5. It's the earliest of that strength on record in the Atlantic. Amy Kindly has more on its path and power. It almost seems peaceful here in the eye of Hurricane Barrel, but this is a deadly history-making monster that's been growing in power. It is total devastation. Total, total devastation. Barrel is now the earliest Atlantic Cat 5 ever recorded. More broadly, it's the earliest major hurricane there in 58 years, and it's the easternmost to form in the tropical Atlantic in June. The National Hurricane Center says it's been getting stronger, hitting St. Vincent, Barbados, and other places as a Cat 4, before strengthening to a Category 5 last night. This is, this is, this is madness. I have never seen this in my 46 years of life. 
For now, the eye of Hurricane Barrel is in fairly open waters of the Caribbean Sea. It's expected to impact Haiti and the Dominican Republic beginning today. It could eventually hit Mexico, but the weather in Cancun is still beautiful for now. That community is getting some schools ready to use as shelters since it's clear what Hurricane Barrel can do. There's nothing more we can do but, sit, but stand and watch total destruction. Our livelihood gone down the drain. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Authorities are investigating allegations that a corrections officer in central Nebraska sexually assaulted an inmate. The allegation was made by a 39-year-old man jailed at the Hull County Department of Corrections in Grand Island. Authorities say the inmate accused a corrections officer of sexual assault, but no further details have been released. There's no word on whether or not the officer has been suspended. Deputies from the Cherry County Sheriff's Office, meanwhile, have made an arrest in connection with a deadly hit-and-run crash west of Valentine on Saturday. An 82-year-old man who was taking part in tour to Nebraska died when authorities believe he was hit by a vehicle. The collision happened about three miles west of Valentine on Highway 20. As News Channel Nebraska reported last week, Tour de Nebraska was a five-day bike tour with more than 400 bicyclists riding hundreds of miles throughout north-central Nebraska. Well, in a last-minute push to make the November ballot, folks backing the legalization of medical marijuana tell us their petition drive needs several thousand more names. And as Joe Jordan reports, the deadline to turn in the names to the Secretary of State is 5 p.m. Wednesday. And as of late Sunday, the backers of medical marijuana said they were still 12,000 names short of their goal. In 2020 and 2022, petition drives for medical marijuana came up short. Backers now hoping this third time is the charm. Other petition drives out on the street right now, specifically those dealing with abortion, are looking to change the Nebraska Constitution, and that requires 123,000 valid signatures in order to make the November ballot. But the push for medical marijuana calls for a lesser change, not changing the Nebraska Constitution, but enacting a new state law, and that requires fewer names, 87,000. But we're told that is still a significant challenge. Krista Eggers is in charge of the petition drive for medical marijuana. We need 87,000 valid signatures. We came in with 100,000 two years ago, and that was not enough. After the state tossed signatures for validity, people were not registered voters. You know, um, somebody signed as Matt instead of Matthew. Very, very technicalities. But what we know is we can't come in with just over, right? We have to have this huge buffer. And that has been the challenge, is raising enough money to, to get this done. While looking at a Wednesday deadline, the Nebraska debate over medical marijuana goes back five years and the pros and cons have changed little, if at all. I'm pleading with you, not as a campaign manager, but as a mom who has a seven-year-old little boy who desperately, desperately, as so many patients do in this state, need an option for us to talk with his doctor about medical cannabis as a treatment option. You've got kids. If, God forbid, one of them had some debilitating disease and was pain and suffering, you tried everything you could, wouldn't you want the opportunity to try something like medical marijuana to see if that would alleviate your child's pain and suffering? Well, I've sat down with the families and they're very sympathetic. Protect the public safety, you really have to make sure it goes through the FDA process. Nebraska is one of only six states without some form of legalized medical marijuana. In Omaha, Joe Jordan, News Channel, Nebraska. Demolition of two vacant residence halls on the University of Nebraska Kearney campus scheduled to begin next week. Contractors will start work July 8th at the site of University Residence North and South. The project expected to run into November. Now, UNK opened those new residence halls for fraternities and sororities over the last two years. The buildings they're replacing were built in the early 90s as a temporary solution to housing needs for the fraternity and sorority community. The wood frame buildings were only supposed to be around for about 20 years. They'll become green spaces once they're demolished. And it's been a full year since a bowling alley in southeast Nebraska was brought back to life. Jake Bartecki sat down with the owners of Ten Pins Fun Center in Beatrice. It's been one whole year since a Southeast Nebraska bowling alley was brought back to life. 
10 Pins Fun Center and Beatrice is in full gear 365 days later. There's really nothing to do out east of town for the people and that's why we want to keep this up. Chris Bell and his wife Heidi are the new owners of 10 Pins. In the past year they've made numerous changes and have tried to give the bowling alley a fun vibe feel. But going through the changes hasn't always been a 10 pin strike. I remember when the bank account uh, had to grab a credit card and put it on a credit card to uh, make sure that uh, the bills were getting paid. Um, but now the, the money's the money's uh, slowly starting to come back. A major part of the changes for 10 Pins was opening their 19 and older room, which features skill games, pool tables, darts, and keno. The kids can bowl. The parents can go over into the and get away from the kids and have their own like little date night. Look, I'm not the best bowler in the world, and maybe neither are you, but it's a fun thing to do. And fun has been the name of the game for the past 365 days for the Bell family, as it gives adults and kids of all ages something fun to do on the east side of Beatrice. It's awesome to see the kids cheering and dancing and everything on the lanes and well, not on the approach and next to the tables. It's on the, con on the concourse. Moving forward, the Bells say their next big project is to paint the outside of the building. In Beatrice, Jake Bartecki, News Channel, Nebraska. And you can stay up to date with the very latest by following us online. Head to newschannelnebraska.com. Click on the News tab there. You can also follow us on X, like us on Facebook and Instagram as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. You're watching News Channel Nebraska.